Welcome to In the Word with Roy Edwards, where we dive into the timeless wisdom of the scriptures with your host, Pastor Roy Edwards. He is the senior pastor of Redemption Church in Casa Grande. Service times are Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, check out www.redemptioncg.org. Prepare to be uplifted, encouraged, and challenged by the Word of God. Let's jump right into the message. Thank you for tuning in today for day 18 of our 30-day prayer journey. Let's jump right in. James chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to read through verse 16, but we're going to break it down a little bit different today. So James begins chapter 5, verse 13, and he says it like this. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. You've got to understand that James acknowledges the two ends of the emotional spectrum, suffering and joy, cheerful and suffering. He reminds us that no matter what season of life that we're in, we need to turn to God. If you're going through hardship, whether it's physical pain or stress or spiritual issues, James says, pray. There's an immediate invitation to take your struggle to God. Prayer is our lifeline, and in times of suffering, it's not an option. It's a must. On the other hand, if you're cheerful, if life is going well, things are going good, James says, sing psalms. This is also a form of prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. We cannot forget to turn God, turn to God in our joy, acknowledging his blessings. So wherever you find yourself right now, whether you're suffering or in joy, the response is to reach out to God whether it's through prayer or through praise. Let's look at verse 14 and 15. He says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. These, these two verses take the idea of prayer beyond just the individual, and it brings the importance of getting together with other believers. James encourages the sick to seek out the elders of the church. Notice that it doesn't say, handle this all on your own. You can do it all by yourself. In fact, that's quite contrary. Instead, we're called to bring others into our struggles, especially spiritual leaders who are strong in their faith. The act of anointing with oil symbolizes consecration, and it also symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's a reminder that healing is ultimately the work of God. And the prayer of faith, it isn't just a hopeful wish. It's a bold, confident petition to God, trusting in God's ability to heal both the body and the spirit. You got to get this, that this takeaway today here is this. It's that physical sickness is often intertwined with spiritual issues. James acknowledges that sometimes sickness can be leaked to sin. That's why he concludes this powerful promise. And if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. Not only does God offer physical healing, but he's ready to forgive and to heal us spiritually. So let's look look at verse 16. It's a profound verse on spiritual accountability and community, getting together with other believers. He says, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James is calling us to something deep here. It's confession. But this isn't just about confessing to God in private. James encourages us to confess to one another. He's talking about transparency, being vulnerable, and it can be challenging. But it is essential for spiritual healing and growth. When we confess our sins, we break the power of secrecy and isolation. Confession leads to healing because it brings accountability and restoration. But I do have to tell you something here. Be careful who you tell your mess to so they don't use it against you later. James then reminds us of a powerful intercessory prayer. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Prayer isn't just about our own needs. It's about lifting up others too. It's about standing in the gap 
and it's asking God to help us in our lives and in their lives. What a promise we have in this final verse. He says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. When we pray with passion and righteousness, our prayers are powerful. God hears them, and they have a great impact. The word fervent there is, is a prayer that's full of energy. It's persistent, and it's heartfelt. It's the kind of prayer that moves mountains and changes lives. So how can we live out James 5, 13 through 16 in our daily walk with Jesus? Let me give you five fast points. Number one, pray in all seasons. Whether you're in a time of suffering or joy, make prayer a constant part of your life. If you're struggling, pour out your heart to God. If you're in a season of blessing, lift up your voice in praise. Number two, seek community prayer. Don't hesitate to ask others to pray for you, especially when facing sickness or trials. The Bible encourages us to rely on our spiritual leaders for support. Number three, confess and be accountable. Find somebody that you trust. I mean that you really trust, whether it's a pastor or a mentor, a close friend that's in the faith, and be open about your struggle. It's not about judgment, but it's about growth and healing. Number four, pray for each other. Pray for those around you. We are called to pray for one another, not just for ourselves. Your prayer could be the very thing that causes someone else's healing, restoration, or breakthrough. Then number five, pray with fervency and righteousness. Don't give up on prayer. Pray fervently. Pray with passion. Pray with persistence, knowing that God hears you and he honors the prayer of persistence. And those prayers have great power. So let's pray together, can we? Father, I love you today, and I thank you that we can come to you today in humility and in faith. I thank you for the gift of prayer and for the promise that you hear us when we call upon you. And God, we ask for those who are suffering. God, we ask you to touch them and bring healing to them in Jesus' name. We pray for those who are, who are, are overfilled with joy, that you would continue to just bless them and move in their lives, and that, God, that they would just continue to praise you in all things in their life. And Father, for anybody who is who is struck down by sin, God, we ask you that you would forgive them and that they would they would have a repentant heart towards you. God, I pray that we could be a people that would pray for one another, support each other, and walk in Jesus' name. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Listen, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May his love surround you, his spirit guide you, his grace cover you, today and always, in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for listening today to In the Word with Roy Edwards. We pray you've been encouraged and challenged by the Word today. Be sure to follow Pastor Edwards on social media, YouTube, and you can also listen to these messages on any podcast platform you consume content. Just search for In the Word with Roy Edwards and enjoy. We will be back next week with more messages to encourage you in the Word.